morning, everyone. Before I begin, I want to ask you to take note of my Twitter name, at Joe Chopra. Joe, J-O. And the reason I'm telling you this is, in the unlikely event that I see anybody on their phone, I'm going to assume you're tweeting about me and how amazing I am. <laughs> you may be wondering also why I am standing up here looking like a stormtrooper and why my first slide is a battalion of mounted police from Chicago circa 1925. The truth is I'm a little bit nervous. I've actually been telling them over there, my hands are shaking, and I thought I'd have some protection with me. The main reason I'm nervous is because of the title of my talk, and I thought I would just put it up there and not have to say it, but then I remembered that there are people here who won't be able to read the text, so I'm gonna have to say it. Where's my... Is this hooked up? Oh, there it is. The title of my <laughs> talk is Fuck Inclusion and the Horse It Rode In On. I am really tired of the word inclusion. I can't see my slides, so there they are. I'm going to walk over here. I'm sick of the word inclusion. I know that we all agree that it's the perfect word for what we are trying to do, the world that we want to create, an inclusive world for people with disabilities, but I am as skeptical as this guy. I use it all the time, just like all of us do. We've agreed, it's tested, it's perfect, but actually, it isn't. Inclusion is a word that presupposes a power relationship. There's a party going on in another room and somebody else is gonna decide whether those people on the outside can come in or not. <laughs> Nobody wants to be that kid who is standing there timidly on the outside, watching all the fun on the inside and hoping that someone is gonna notice that they're out there. Nobody wants to be that person who is sitting there making lists of all the reasons why they should be included. Even though, as we all know, there are plenty of reasons. We've all made those lists. I've made tons of them. List after list after list. When I started thinking about our mainstream schools in India and how broken they are for typical kids, I realized, upside down, that's a picture of me standing on my head for those who can't see it. And I thought, if we could only bring kids with disabilities into mainstream classrooms, everything would improve, and it would improve for everybody. So I've done that, list after list after list. But it's so obvious, we shouldn't have to keep on saying it. Our kids come with gifts, with special abilities, with strange little personality quirks, with experiences that only they have. Activity-based learning, for example, was invented by Dr. Maria Montessori because she was working with kids with mental handicaps. And when she saw that they couldn't learn the way that typical kids were learning, she designed this wonderful system called activity-based learning, learning by doing, and lo and behold, we found out that that's the way all kids learn well. Theory of mind which we use in so many human endeavors, which we use in diplomatic relationships, hostage negotiations, uh, HR departments all over the world, business deals. We only understand theory of mind because we were studying children with autism who don't have it. But if you think about both of these examples and many of the other things that I would put on my list, they're still working from a deficit. What's this kid's problem? What kind of a system can we design to help that child circumvent that problem. So I wanted to think about disability as a superpower. And here's our most famous um, poster child for autism. This is Greta Thunberg. In the first picture, she is sitting all alone in front of the Swedish parliament. And in the other picture, she has galvanized the largest demonstration for climate change in the history of the world, autism. Greta Thunberg was diagnosed with autism at the age of 11, but at the age of eight, she started finding out about climate change. And she was so horrified by the inability and the 
unwillingness of the adults in her world to do anything about it that she went completely silent. She was diagnosed, of course, because we like to diagnose everything. We, she was given the diagnosis of selective mutism. But she said, it's just common sense. Why keep talking to people who aren't going to do anything? There's no point in it. Let's listen to Greta herself. My name is Greta Thunberg. I'm 16 years old. I come from Sweden, and I want you to panic. I don't want your hope. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if the house was on fire, because it is. Because it is. What a superpower is that? Politicians, world leaders, business people, they love to stay in that comfortable gray zone with all the nuance and all the complexity and all the understanding that you're right and you're also right, so I don't have to do anything. And Greta, who has autism, says, uh-uh, it's black and white here and we know exactly what we need to do. And she cannot be diverted from her, her uh, message by flattery. I've seen so many interviewers trying to tell her how amazing she is, how cute she is, how incredible and confident, and she just blows them off and stays on point. That's because of her autism. I think we need that kind of a transformation in our own understanding of disability. We need to stop explaining, stop raising awareness, stop asking for favors all the time. I think we can learn a lot from Greta and from people also on the margins who have transformed the world for themselves. Gay people have done it remarkably well. They have a thousand year, many thousands of years history of being marginalized, being persecuted, being humiliated, executed even, just for who they are. And they decided that they were going to band together and do something about it. They used the law in the same way that disability movements have done, but they also did something different in that, with their confidence, with their, their joie de vivre, with their happiness about who they are, they changed the way people look at being gay. Now, all over the world, not everywhere, but we're getting there, gay people can marry who they want to. They can adopt children. They can work in the places that they want to, live openly as gay people. And they didn't do it by begging for inclusion. They did it by being themselves, confidently, happily, living in their own skin. So let's stop asking for favors. Let's be a little bit more in your face, a little bit more badass, a little less grateful, and a little less polite. I want to hear from Greta one more time, because she's just so inspiring. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Greta talks the way she does because of her autism. That is her superpower. But we listen to her because she's right. I want to end now on a personal note. This is Moi Moi, um, and today is her birthday. If she were alive, she would be 30 years old today, and I wouldn't be here. I'd be home in Derridoon celebrating with her. But the thing I want to tell you is that Moi Moi was never included in our family. She was never included by her friends. She was never included in the community in which she was born and which she grew up. She was never included because she was always there. We didn't have to include her. Moi Moi was in our family. She had friends. She lived in the community. And my birthday wish for Moi Moi and all of the people like her in this room and in this world is that we just see them. We just look from right to left and back and forth and see that we're all here together and nobody has to be included. Thank you very much. <laughs>